So there's a lot of previous research that suggests that teacher anxiety can be transferred to children. It is the case, uh, and we'll see uh, some examples. Uh, I can't remember if I've put them in here. There are certainly I have some to hand. Um, uh, concerning the fact that teachers have their own anxieties, especially in primary level, uh, about maths and about their capabilities of maths and about their own personal experiences with maths when they were young uh, and trying to learn this. And the management of those anxieties is really important in terms of how those maybe feed onto the children who struggle with maths. They're not going to feed problematically into those children who do well. As I mentioned before, children are very aware of their own capabilities to a, to a level, to a degree. They know that they're no good at maths or that they're really good at maths, so they can do this stuff. And I've got some quotes that will back that up in a bit. Children become aware of this intelligence hierarchy. Um, uh, my own children, uh, who are now m much older, um, very, very able. Uh, one, one of my sons was not great. He's not the world's best brain. Uh, he's got other skills that, that he uses in his, in his work. Um, but, and he struggled with both maths and English. And he knew. He knew exactly where he lay, even at primary level, in terms of his capabilities. And it would sometimes make him not want to go into <coughs> school if there was a test on that day and he didn't feel confident about it. So children do know of this. And he also knew who to go to of the other children to find out the answer. And that's the hierarchy. That's the knowledge about the hierarchy that children have. So we need to be aware of that within the, the, the kinds of anxieties that develop. And as I mentioned, children may be indeed punished for incomplete work or incorrect work. Uh, and again, I've got some ideas about that uh, to come. There is an idea also that, that maybe what, I, what mass anxiety leads to is the fact that Children who have maths anxiety disengage from, from the maths process. And so actually what they really lack by the time they get older is all of the practice that they missed out on because they avoided doing it because of their anxieties. So it might not be something to do with ability, at least not ability alone, but actually ability exacerbated by the avoidance strategies that children use to not have to engage in things that make them feel anxious. We also know that there are some interesting brain correlates with um, mass anxiety. There's an area of the brain, the frontoparietal areas of the brain, that are involved in the regulation of emotions. And these are shown to be much more active in mass anxious individuals. So individuals who have been given a mass anxiety questionnaire, and through that, whatever the criticism of questionnaire methodologies might be, have, have come out through, uh, through that as mass, an mass anxious. When you give them uh, uh, an EEG uh, or, uh, and look at frontoparietal areas of the brain, you see them being much more active. This is even before they have the problem to solve. This is merely in anticipation of the fact that they will be given a simple maths question to solve. So this is not about complex maths. This is that you can give them 2 plus 2 under these circumstances. And before you give them a really simple sum like that, they show these levels of heightened emotional activity and heightened anxiety. But if you teach them strategies to reduce their anxieties about the maths, then you can show these levels coming, you can see these levels coming down. So part of the process of dealing with maths anxious children might be about training them to, to uh, accept and understand and therefore lessen their anxieties about the maths. It's not about the maths per se, it's about the anxieties they have concerning the maths. Of course, that's tied up with the maths per se, but it's not the same as. OK, so um, I want to present to you some of the, the data that uh, uh, Dom uh, uh, has recently collected. So this is data that comes from 2015. So it's very recent data. Um, he did a number of focus groups. Um, uh, all in all, these were, the v these were the numbers of people that he had, uh, uh, had talked to, 41 children in the age range of four to seven years old. 
seven parents, nine teachers, they were together in focus groups. There were, there were more than one focus group, but there were always parents and teachers present in those focus groups. Um, and then just two maths experts who were also present in a couple of the focus groups with parents and teachers. So they weren't, there wasn't always a maths expert in there, uh, just the way it fell out and, and the way he was able to get his participants. Um, and I want to present you with a number of the statements that b were, were made um, by the variety of players, children, parents, teachers, and maths experts within these focus groups. Because I think they're very informative about the ideas and thoughts around maths anxiety. And there are very few accounts of children, in fact, this is one of, uh, one of only, uh, I've seen one other, where actually people have asked children of this age group. Now, there are all sorts of problems with asking children loaded questions, whether they understand the questions properly, and so on. So I, we, we appreciate the difficulties and the fact that this is uh, it's probably not as stark and as clear as it seems on, on the screen. Nevertheless, it is important to get their ideas. And, and if we only ask teachers <coughs> about how successful a programme is, then we only get teachers' views, which, of course, uh, you know, why wouldn't they, are going to be slightly skewed in the direction of positivity. Unless you've got an axe to grind, in which case they'll be skewed in the direction of negativity. So, here are the ideas of children's account, the th sorts of things that they said in terms of success. Um, I like getting a smiley face for my numeric work. So this idea that you get a reward for being correct, interesting, because you get a reward, a reward for being correct, but you don't get a reward for having tried hard to do it. You'd get an absence of a reward if you don't get it correct. That's actually not neutral, that's negative. And children know exactly that that's a negative and not just a neutral scenario. Um, there are children who have high ability, who make claims like, I don't really need any help, I can just do this stuff. That's fine. And then there are children who have real fear. It makes me need the toilet. This is not just, I'm a bit anxious about this. This is a real physical response of anxiety to the idea of having to engage with mathematics. Avoidance. Sometimes I'm a little bored and then I want to get out. So this is actually about... A ch this is a child who has disengaged with the process. They've, that's why they're bored, because they've decided to avoid even trying to do this. And so they're bored, they just want to go. They just want the lesson to end and they can get out of there. Failure, uh, kind of nervous, I'll get them wrong. Um, perception of low, low ability, I get frustrated and then I get angry with my brain. Right? A, 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 real, a real insight into the sort of uh, where, this, the, where this problem stems from in a, in a very young child. And, and confusion. Um, like if it's two, you say five, because they look the same. And we all know children who, who do that and who do that beyond the age where others are starting to not do that anymore. Uh, you know, the B and D in English is the same thing, isn't it? Getting those confused. So there are these errors and we have to be able to, you know, they, they are real fears for, the, for these children. So there's apprehension and, and punishment. Belief that numeracy work at home would be better because the teacher won't be watching me there. So I'll actually do better if I do this at home than if I do this in school when I'm being watched. Um, another comment, very scared because if you get the answer wrong, she'll probably shout at you, or tell you to go back to your seat and work again. These are 2015 students talking about experiences that they're currently having in the classroom. Uh, uh, you know, and there's a lot of nod shake, uh, shaking of heads going there. You know, is this for real? Yes, it is, and we need to be able to address these things. I know how I, uh, I leave to you. Another problem is from parents and teachers, parents particularly. Um, Fraser and Honeyford suggest that some parents may not value achievement in mathematics, and I think that's, that, that's absolutely the case. Um, the Mathematical Association in 2012 said that parents are not facilitating their children's numeracy because they don't understand modern maths. One of the uh, 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 quite frequent comments that we got from, uh, uh, that Dom got from parents was that actually they, the parents, some of the parents said that uh, I'm actually okay with maths but I'm a bit fearful of trying to help my son-daughter because I don't understand the methods being used now. 
Now, I'm a reasonably intelligent person, and I had the same trouble with my daughter, who I think, if I remember rightly, was being taught to add up from the left to the right, rather than from the right to the left. And actually, to this day, I don't get it. <laughs> um, so, so as a parent who's an, who's, you know, an academic, I did struggle, um, and, and you know, over the years, there have been countless, I'm sure lots of you in the audience have had this experience, countless arguments within the house of saying, no, do it this way. No, that's not the way I've been taught it. <laughs> so there's this dialogue that seemingly is not really happening between children, uh, between parents and teachers about what's going on, how the things are being taught, uh, and the methodologies. And, and it's interesting that I, I picked up this thing about uh, uh, parents in Singapore who are taking tuition lessons to understand, not because they're poor at math, to understand the modern way of being, of the, ch the way in which their children are being taught because they want to know and be able to help children at home. 